like I said, the uh, power supply I'm going to be using is another one of these uh, heavy duty Akbell power supplies. <clears throat> I did talk about these some time ago, but uh, just for who hasn't seen these yet, this uh, power supply is a very good deal at a place called Hyper Micro. I think they're less than $20. 550 watts, and they're extremely heavy. Um, they have a fan with a speed monitor on them, so if the fan stops, the power supply shuts down right away. Um, let's see if I can get a look at the other side here. There is actually double stacked circuit boards in there, tons of heat sinks, and tons and tons of uh, capacitors and choke coils. Not the best capacitors in the world, but they're not the worst either. They probably last a long time because it's just the circuitry is so well designed. It has 24 pin ATX and uh, the 8 pin EPS 12 volt connector. These do not split into the smaller connectors for older motherboards. So, Also the only downfall is a lot of the 4 pin connectors are close together because it was designed for a... I think this was designed for a Sun Java workstation. Uh, I forget which model number but <clears throat> the hard drive cage you know, would plug into this. It does have two SATA connectors, which is all I need for this system. Actually, I'm going to need three, but the uh, the Blu-ray burner, I believe, comes with a power adapter cable, so I'm in good shape there. Uh, that's the nice thing about the LG uh, Blu-ray drives. When you buy them OEM, they still come with software and cables. Well, hard drives and power supply are installed. The downside is there's so many unused connectors in that power supply that my organized cabling job went to a wonderful pile of crap bundled up right in the middle there. I couldn't find any better way to do it. Uh, normally I'd hide it on top of the uh, Blu-ray drive, but it's not a good idea to put lots of pressure on top of those drives because sometimes it can press down on the lid and, and uh, cause the clamp on the top of the disc to bind up on the cover. So... I did the next best thing and just tied it there. Couldn't tie it to that either because it wasn't strong enough and I uh, didn't want to tie it to this bracket because I don't want the edge of the metal cutting into the wires. This thing's got to make an hour long journey back to my dad's house so uh, everything's got to be secure uh, and tightened down in this. Uh, I did mount the hard drives with the plugs facing the other side of the case like I normally do because it was just easier that way. Um, and the reason I double spaced them is just simply for airflow. There's only going to be two hard drives in this system, so might as well take advantage of the space. For some reason on these motherboards, let me see if I can flip this around here, <coughs> Gigabyte decides to include one SATA cable with a straight plug and one with a 90 plug. I really wish they would both be 90 degree plugs. I mean, come on. Is there really any need to have the straight connector on the drive end? Uh, I think the, the 90 connector is much better. So, But other than that, everything was looking good. I'm going to put this side cover on after I put the screws in the other side of the, the uh, Blu-ray drive here. And uh, we're going to start installing some software. Almost forgot, since there's no PCI Express power connector on this power supply, you got to use the little adapter that they give you with the video card. So that made my pile of crappy wire even bigger pile of crap. So let's put this video card in now. Mr. Video Card is in his happy home. It didn't make too much of a mess. Uh. I'm excited. I get to fire this thing up in a second here. I just got to plug everything into the back and off we go. Hopefully there won't be any fireworks. Just a quick look at the removable air filters that are in the front of this case before I put the faceplate on. The faceplate just snaps in. It's got nice uh, good quality latches on it. And the filters, you just push these tabs back and the uh, filter hinges right off and you can clean it. I usually just take my vacuum brush and, and vacuum them off you know even while the computer's running because uh, the dirt's always going to be on the outside of course and you can just vacuum it right off but uh, if you need to take the filters out for whatever reason they just snap in place. 
So let's hook her up and see if she runs. All right, it's up and running now. Everything worked the first time, actually. We've already gone through the BIOS setup, and uh, I'm partway into the Windows installation now. So, as soon as I got Windows on, we'll have some fun, do some benchmarks, uh, run some programs, things like that. So far, so good. It's too bad the uh, this power supply only has an 80 millimeter fan because it's it's kind of noisy, but uh, you know. It's better than those quiet power supplies that like to burn themselves up after a while. She's running real smooth. Too bad that clump of wire in there just still looks like crap. That's probably the worst part of this whole thing. Other than that, it turned out pretty good. Well, this is the first time ever that I've actually had to use the driver CD that came with the motherboard to get the network port to work. Uh, but that's no big deal. This is all brand new hardware. Once the CD is done installing, I'm going to go online, of course, and get the latest version of all the drivers and, and uh, make sure the BIOS is up to date. The nice thing about these newer motherboards is the BIOS can be updated right through Windows. Uh, it's very easy to do and, uh, for the most part, automated. Just a few clicks. And... Uh, since these gigabyte boards use dual BIOS chips, it's pretty hard to screw one of them up. So I'm just going to wait for these drivers to install and we'll go online and get the video card driver and all that good stuff. We're still running at a pretty low resolution right now. I'm downloading the NVIDIA driver now. Can't wait to. Uh Turn down the transparency effects and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Holy crap. 2.5 megs, 2.6 megs. Holy crap. NVIDIA's got a fast uh, web server. Although this is pretty slow compared to you know, a more modern cable connection. I just have regular Doxus 2 cable. So I'm not cool enough for Doxus 3 quite yet. It's not available in my area. Anyway. Blu-ray playback looks great. This monitor is nowhere near as, as nice as my uh, SIPS monitor though. It just doesn't have the punch. And uh, here's the Windows rating. Not bad. 7.3, 7.1. The hard drive, of course, is the slowest part. And uh, I'm not really interested in trying a solid state drive just to get a little bit higher rating. Um, this system is more than enough for what my dad's going to do. So, pretty sweet. Okay, using the very handy Memtest 86 Plus. Uh, I found that I did indeed have the RAM in the wrong sockets, uh, so it was only running in single channel mode. This motherboard is kind of picky uh, compared to what I'm used to working with. You need to use the two white colored sockets if you're, if you're running two modules and you want a dual channel. Uh, if you use the two blue sockets, the system won't even boot, and uh, any other combination you just run in single channel. But, uh, I went from 8 gigabytes per second in single channel to 11.4 gigabytes per second uh, with the dual channel setup. And I haven't even done any manual tweaking of the BIOS settings yet. This is all auto configured, which I know more speed can be had out of this RAM because it's designed uh, to be quite a bit faster than what it's currently set to. And also run at a lower voltage because it's the G Skill Eco series. It's supposed to be able to work at 1.35 volts instead of 1.5. So I might do some tweaking a little bit here. But, uh, this is just a wonderful program. Uh, it really comes in handy. Not only does it thoroughly test your RAM uh, and find problems that any other test can't find. You know, you, you, you think your computer doing some goofy stuff. A lot of times it's the RAM. And uh, you would never know until you try this program. Uh, it also gives a lot of information about the system, 
the speeds, the chipset, and the RAM itself. So you know exactly what's going on. You can go and adjust BIOS settings and uh, watch your throughput of the, sp the memory right up here and it shows you the true speed. So it's very, very handy. All right, I re-ran the assessment after going to dual channel and it increased the memory speed to 7.5. I think it was 7.3 before, so minor increase, but every little bit helps.